Do you cherish the recipes that were handed down to you? Maybe you even keep them in a special box. Now imagine if an entire community made their ancestors' recipes into a book. That's what they did in Alton, Illinois. Today we're riffing on five recipes from the Black Pioneer Cookbook. Ready or not, it's Family Meal. Welcome to Family Meal, where we make memory-making meals with a splash of wine. First up, we have buttermilk cornbread with smoked pork cracklings. This is not sweet cornbread you get from a box. This is a rustic and earthy bread, like what I ate growing up. This bread is paired with two vermouth. One is from the San Joaquin Valley in California, and the other is a Spanish vermouth. Next up, we'll be playing with good old pot liquor, the juice at the bottom of a pot of greens. This one is made from turnips, and we're adding some pepper and edible flowers. The pot liquor will be served with a Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley in central France and a Sauvignon Blanc from the Aconcagua Costa along the Pacific Ocean in Chile. For the main course, we'll be having game this time. A pan-fried rabbit in mushroom gravy served with a sweet corn salad. Schiava is the wine pairing for this course. Both are from the Alto Adige in northern Italy. These are light reds that won't overpower the rabbit. The dessert this time is a navy bean pie. You heard me right, bean pie with a flaky crust. There's a brown sugar brulee on top. Two sweet white ports go with this dish. Both are from Portugal. Are you ready to get into these Mississippi River Bend rations? Then let's get into it. I don't know anyone that will turn down fresh hot bread. That's why we're starting with cornbread. Start by preheating the oven to 400 degrees and put your cast iron skillet like this in the oven to heat it up. Make sure you give it at least 30 minutes in there. At the same time, cook the pork until it's crispy. You want little crunchy balls of pork fat at the end. Save the pork fat from this step, you'll need it later. Next, sift all the dry ingredients into a bowl. Drop your pork cracklings in so that they get covered with flour as well. Now combine the milk, eggs, and melted butter in a medium bowl. Add the wet stuff to the dry stuff in batches. Stir it until everything is good and combined. Now it's time for the pork fat. Oil up the skillet with the fat you saved. And that's ready for the batter. You should see some sizzling going on because the skillet is so hot. Spread it out until it's even and pop that into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. If you're feeling decadent, you can pour extra butter on top right as the bread is coming out of the oven. Doesn't that look like the start of a great meal? Now let's talk about the wines. We have two vermouth here. These are flavored wines with grape-based spirits added. They're herbaceous and powerful, great wines to wake up your palate to a meal. The first is from the San Joaquin Valley in Central California. This is the largest wine region in the state. It's hot and dry there, so hearty grapes grow best there. Orange Muscat, the primary grape in this wine, thrives in the San Joaquin Valley. This grape is known for its orange aromas. There are also some baking spice characteristics in this wine, likely from the herbs added when it was aging. Our second vermouth is from northern Spain and is a family recipe dating back to the early 1900s. The primary grapes in this are Doña Blanco and Godello. These grapes are aromatic on their own, but then over 40 herbs are added to this sipping vermouth. One eater went to every wine store in town looking for this bottle. It's that interesting and refreshing. Look at the too. Yeah. Aren't they exciting? I'm crazy about these. Mm. That was exciting. Oh, yeah. It's fascinating. Yeah. It oh, wow. It's very complex. Like when you smell it like and then when you taste it, it's like out of this world. Yeah. 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 Oh, that is crazy. Soup is next. Pot liquor is a staple in many African American homes. It's the yummy juice after you boil a pot of grains. This pot liquor is made from salt pork, turnip grains, and aromatics. Four hours in the crock pot is my preferred way to make it, but you can also use the stove. There's also a secret ingredient, Sichuan peppercorn. This adds an interesting and numbing sensation to the soup. We're also putting some roasted turnip root in the soup. We need half-inch blocks that'll get roasted in the oven with salt, pepper, and olive oil. 20 minutes at 350 degrees will give them a nice roasted flavor. 
Once the broth is done, strain it through a cloth to help clarify it. See all the little bits the towel is catching? That's all flavor and nutrients, but we don't want a cloudy looking stock at this wine party. Now let's garnish this up. You start with a bit of the clarified broth. Add a few pieces of roasted turnip, some edible flowers, and a few more peppercorns. By the way, these are cilantro, sage, and tomatillo flowers from things that were growing in a garden. You don't have to buy anything special, just use what you have. This is hot pepper. Um, it's nummy. Nummy. Yeah. Oh, so Floral, good. and I get the bites of those. Uh, I can definitely feel the numbingness mm -hmm. on my tongue when I bite into like the. Let's call it a pepper. It's a little bit. It's a peppercorn. Is it a peppercorn? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sichuan peppercorn. Sichuan peppercorn. Sichuan peppercorn. Sichuan peppercorn. The pot liquor is being served with some delicious white wines. We have Pascal Jolivet's Attitude Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley in France and Arboleda Sauvignon Blanc from coastal Chile. Sauvignon Blanc is known for being grassy or herbaceous, just like this soup with turnip grains. But I think it works nicely because the broth also has pork fat and pork flavor, which adds a foundation to the bite when you enjoy them together. Both of these wines have good acid. You need acid with a slightly fatty broth like this. It also helps that we're serving these wines fairly chilled. You should serve them as soon as you get them out of the fridge. The one from France is lovely. It's very um, it mild or something. Yeah, it's very nice. Rabbit is the main course today. It's something I've never cooked, and I've only eaten it once. But I'm an adventurous home cook with the camera, so let's go for it. Breaking down the rabbit is the first step. You need enough servings for your eaters. Once the rabbit is cut up, soak it in salt water for at least 30 minutes. This starts to tenderize it and adds flavor. You could go up to overnight if you wanted. After it's soaked, pat the rabbit dry and dredge it in seasoned flour. Brown all of the rabbit pieces in hot oil. You may need to work in batches. Then bake the rabbit for an hour at 300 degrees. The final step is making the gravy. First, you brown the butter and cook the shallots down. Now add the mushrooms and cook them until tender. The flour is next and the rabbit drippings from the pan to finish off the gravy. Let it get hot to make sure the flour begins to thicken things up. Let's plate this up. Pour this gravy over the rabbit right before you serve. My grandmother will call this smothered rabbit, as did the writer in this cookbook. Either way, doesn't that look tasty? A corn salad would be great with this. The fried corn in this dish is the star here. Start by cutting the kernels off the cob. Now we quickly cook the corn along with some onion and bell pepper and a bit of butter. You don't want to cook everything until done, you just want the juices to start flowing a bit. Just get the ingredients warm. I'll also add in a few fresh tomatoes, a bit of scallion, and some chopped sorrel for color and flavor. Who can resist fresh corn? Now let's talk about these two light Italian reds we'll be enjoying with this course. I wanted light wines that wouldn't overpower the rabbit. Schiava is that wine. If you like Gamay or Beaujolais, you'll like this wine too. Both wines are from the Alto Adige in northern Italy. It's the northernmost wine region in the country, on the Austrian border. It's an area known for its white wines. We have the Castel Federalte Reven Schiava. This is a red wine that hasn't seen any oak. It's been aged in stainless steel only. You'll also notice red fruit flavor, good acidity, and low tannins for a red wine. The other Schiava is Elena Waltz Schiava which is also bursting with red fruit and good acidity. The guests felt that this was a rounder and more complex wine between the two, and I have to say that I agree. But both wines were nice with the rabbit, so the choice is yours. Try them both, and leave a comment below to let me know what you thought. The one on the right is more... Wow. Oh, it's got such a smooth smell. Yeah. Like a fruity, juicier, yeah. yeah. It's that time, dessert. We're having navy bean pie this time. The recipe just says make a crust, so use your own go-to crust recipe, or look here for one I like. You start with the navy beans. 
I mash them some, but not into a paste. To that, you add butter, eggs, vanilla, and sugar. This is your bean custard. Pour this into your pie crust and bake for 35 minutes at 350 degrees. The last step is the brulee. Wait for the pie to come to room temperature before you start and dab away any wetness. Then completely cover the top with brown sugar and use a torch or broiler to create the brulee. Don't those look like rustic deliciousness? Would you get into those? It's not like, oh my gosh, that's a sweet dessert, or oh my gosh, we're gonna just the right amount. Isn't that interesting? I love that. Like you would eat the whole thing instead of just have a pot. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this rustic delight will be paired with two white ports. Both are from Portugal and from the Douro Valley. The Ferreira white port has the stewed fruit and woody and oaky flavors you'd expect. People also picked up licorice in this wine. It's more delicate than you might think, given its color and age. The other choice is the Fonseca Chiraco white port. This wine is a sipper. It's smooth but intense, with lots of oak character. If you're not used to fortified wines, you might find it strong. Using it in a spritzer or an aperitif cocktail is a good option. Wow, let's just go on colors first. Right? This is just beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yeah, very sweet. Yeah. Oh, honey, honey. And I feel it going right in my stomach. Like, like it. It's like, Warms, yeah. It's, yeah. The Black Pioneer Cookbook has over 60 recipes that were handed down to present-day residents of Alton, Illinois by their ancestors. They range from muscadine jam and egg custard pie to raccoon, sweet potato biscuits, and vegetable gumbo. Alton is about 18 miles north of St. Louis on the Illinois side of the Mississippi River. It was a town of about 2,000 people in the 1830s when the first anti-slavery meeting was held there. Alton also became a stop on the Underground Railroad around this time. Slaves would cross the river fleeing from Missouri, which was a slave state, to the Illinois side, which was a free state. Eventually, a black community developed in Alton. This was a thriving community of black farmers, ministers, business people, and politicians that coexisted along with a strong anti-slavery community. It wasn't perfect, but it was better than the alternative. The Committee on Black Pioneers at the Alton Museum of History and Art compiled recipes from these early black residents into the Black Pioneer Cookbook. I was definitely inspired by this book. You will be too. If you want to learn more about these recipes, I encourage you to check out the Black Pioneer Cookbook page on the Family Meal section of Winosity. All of these recipes are there with the wine pairings. And I hope you'll join us for the next episode. It'll be based on Verda Mae Smart Grosvenor's cookbook, Vibration Cooking, or The Travel Notes of a Geechee Girl. She's a standard bearer of Gullah food and culture of her native South Carolina. You don't want to miss these tasty coastal dishes. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.